Why did the biology teacher break up with the physics teacher? There was no chemistry. Today, I'm going to recap a 2011 action thriller film called Elephant White. The film depicts several members of the Chong Chow gang in Thailand, escorting girls into a building to work as prostitutes. Afterward, they exit the building and mount their motorcycles, oblivious to the fact that a bald man is observing them from across the street. It is later revealed that this bald man is an American assassin named Curdy Church, who has taken on the task of eliminating the Chong Chow gang members. However, his client insisted that the murders must appear to have been perpetrated by the Zhang gang, which is the Chong Chow gang's rival. The objective was to incite conflict between the two factions. To accomplish this, Curdy rolled a grenade towards the gang members, killing them all in a single devastating explosion. He then brought a kidnapped member of the Zhang gang to the scene and placed a gun in his hand, ensuring that the Chong Chow gang would blame their rivals for the attack. With his mission complete, Curdy needed to flee the crime scene as quickly as possible. Just as he was about to leave, he realized a woman had witnessed his actions. He didn't speak to her, knowing he needed to depart before the authorities arrived. In the following scene, Chong Chow gang leader advisor Boon learns of his men's demise, allegedly at the hands of the Zhang gang using a bomb. Enraged, advisor Boon commands his gang to retaliate against the Zhang gang at midnight. Meanwhile, Curdy meets with his client, Rajadon, to receive payment. It is disclosed that Rajadon sought to dismantle the criminal gangs because they had abducted and killed his daughter, and he sought vengeance. Rajadon proposes that Curdy eliminate more Chong Chow gang members, offering a substantial reward for his success. Curdy accepts, but requires a new weapon for the job. Curdy visits a club owned by arms dealer Jimmy the Brit, who is skilled at assembling weapons with his eyes shut. However, upon seeing Curdy, Jimmy panics and flees, prompting Curdy to give chase. Eventually, Curdy catches up to Jimmy and reassures him that he only needs to purchase a weapon, not harm him. Relieved, Jimmy leads Curdy to one of his armories, where Curdy selects a sniper rifle. Armed with his new weapon, Curdy infiltrates a temple tower to execute his next assignment. Coincidentally, the tower is situated opposite a club owned by the Zhang gang, and Curdy anticipates that the Chong Chow gang will strike the club in retaliation for the bombing. He waits for the gang's arrival in the tower, preparing by hiding the money from Rajadan on the floor and removing one of the stairs in case someone enters the tower while he is in action. Curdy positions his rifle by the window and enjoys his dinner. However, just as he is eating, a woman unexpectedly appears in the tower, catching Curdy off guard. As it turns out, the woman was the same one Curdy had seen when he killed the gang members. Her name was May, and she claimed to have secretly followed Curdy because she wanted to help him. However, Curdy found her claims hard to believe. He tied her up and gagged her, fearing she might jeopardize his plan if left unchecked. Eventually, Curdy grew fond of May untied her, and asked her to wake him if she heard any noise coming from the club's direction. It wasn't long before the Chong Chow gang appeared in front of the club, and a shootout between the two gangs ensued. May immediately woke Curdy, who quickly grabbed his sniper rifle and began firing at the Chong Chow gang members. This frightened May, as it was her first time witnessing someone shoot and kill another person. The next day, Advisor Boon reported the sniper massacre to his gang leader, Boss Katha, suspecting that the sniper was not a member of their rival, the Zhang gang. The sniper, Curdy, was now heading towards the gang's headquarters. May had informed him that she had been a captive of the Chong Chow gang, which was why she wanted to help him eliminate them. Curdy accepted her offer and asked her to show him the Chong Chow gang's base. To his surprise, he found the headquarters to be vast and heavily guarded. Curdy realized that the Chong Chow gang was not as small as Rajadan had described. Later that night, Curdy confronted Rajadan to complain about the dangerous missions he had been assigned. Despite his frustration, Curdy was willing to continue working for Rajadan, provided his payment was tripled. Unexpectedly, Rajadan agreed to his terms. Meanwhile, Boss Katha and Advisor Boon visited the Zhang gang headquarters to propose a ceasefire. They recognized that the Zhang gang was not behind the bombing that killed their members, and that someone or some group had tried to pit the two gangs against each other. 
To solidify the ceasefire, Boss Katha presented a white elephant to the Zhang gang as a symbol of peace. Unbeknownst to them, Curdy and May were observing the meeting from a distance. Now aware that the two gangs had formed a truce, Curdy received a new mission from Rajadan. He went back to see Jimmy to acquire additional weapons, but this time, Jimmy refused to supply him with anything. He had realized that Curdy was using his weapons to kill some of the most influential gang members in the country and did not want the Chong Chao gang to discover that he was the supplier. Eventually, Jimmy relented due to Curdy persistence and took him to another armory located inside a ship where he showed him a special weapon. Curdy suddenly elbowed Jimmy in the face, explaining that he did it to help him. If the Chong Chao gang discovered that Jimmy was supplying weapons to Curdy, Jimmy could claim that Curdy had robbed him. The scar on his face would serve as evidence. Later that night, Curdy utilized his new sniper rifle to eliminate more gang members. He climbed onto the roof of a building opposite Chong Chao's headquarters, taking down his targets one by one. However, this time, an enemy sniper spotted him, forcing Curdy to flee and leave his new weapon behind. Injured by the sniper shot and with the gang aware of his location, Curdy had to act quickly. Fortunately, a gang truck was parked nearby, providing him with an escape route by stealing the vehicle before the gang could surround him. In the midst of his escape, Curdy heard noises coming from the back of the truck. Opening the rear door, he was horrified to find May and several other girls inside. He learned that the girls were sex workers under the gang's control. Curdy told them to leave the truck, but they refused, explaining their addiction to drugs and fear of being found and killed by the gang if they escaped. Curdy decided to let the girls do as they wished, and he and May took a taxi back to their hideout in the Temple Tower. During the journey, Curdy asked May how and why she had ended up in the truck. May explained that she had tried to save the girls but had failed. Upon arriving at their destination, May, realizing Curdy had been shot, took him to the temple's monks for immediate treatment. Meanwhile, the Chong Chao gang found the sniper rifle Curdy had been using and traced it back to Jimmy. Advisor Boone interrogated Jimmy, who claimed that he had been robbed and multiple weapons had been stolen. Advisor Boone believed him but instructed his men to keep a close watch on Jimmy. A few days later, Curdy had recovered from his injuries and resumed his mission. He eliminated Chong Chao gang member stalking Jimmy's club and confiscated one of their phones. Curdy then approached Jimmy for close combat weaponry. As they were heading to the armory, Boss Katha called the gang member's cell phone, now in Curdy possession. Without hesitating, Curdy answered the call and informed Boss Katha that his men were dead and that he was responsible. He offered to stop the killings if Boss Katha released all the girls he had forced into sex work. However, Boss Katha refused, arguing that he was actually helping the girls, as some had been sold by their parents while others were living on the streets before he took them in. If he let them go, they would have nowhere to live. Curdy found himself at a loss for words, as Boss Katha's explanation contradicted what Rajadan had told him. According to Rajadan, the Chong Chao gang had kidnapped the girls before forcing them into sex work. After acquiring the weaponry from Jimmy, Curdy decided to follow Rajadan to uncover the truth. To his surprise, he saw Rajadan entering a brothel, an unexpected location for a man who had recently lost his daughter. Nonetheless, Curdy knew he had to learn more about Rajadan's true motives. Curdy entered the brothel, pretending to be a customer. He approached one of the girls, asking her about Rajadan's true identity and whereabouts. Surprisingly, the girl quickly confessed that Rajadan owned the brothel and was currently upstairs. Not wasting any time, Curdy headed up to confront Rajadan. However, before he could make much progress, the girl shouted a warning to the guards about Curdy's intentions to kill Rajadan. Within moments, guards surrounded Curdy and opened fire on him, but they were unsuccessful in stopping him. Eventually, Curdy found Rajadan in a room and demanded the truth. Realizing he had no other option, Rajadan confessed that he was Boss Katha's son. The story about the Chong Chao gang kidnapping and killing his daughter was a fabrication to gain Curdy's sympathy. Rajadan's true objective was to undermine Advisor Boon's reputation, as Boon was in line to succeed Boss Katha as the gang's leader. 
Believing he was more deserving of the role, Rajadon wanted Curdy to eliminate Advisor Boone, offering him a significant reward for the deed. After considering the proposition, Curdy agreed. Meanwhile, the gang tortured Jimmy after discovering his involvement in the recent incidents. Under duress, Jimmy admitted to supplying Curdy with weapons and confirmed Curdy's role as the gang's killer. Jimmy's confession reached Boss Katha and Advisor Boone, who began planning Curdy capture. Advisor Boone suggested enlisting the help of corrupt police, but Rajadon opposed the idea. He insisted that Boss Katha should rely on him, not Advisor Boone, to resolve the issue. Rajadon's persuasive words convinced Boss Katha to entrust him with the task of apprehending Curdy. At this point, Jimmy was still being held captive by the Chong Chow gang. He told the guards he needed to use the restroom, where he called Curdy to warn him of the impending danger. Since he had disclosed everything to the gang, including Curdy's identity, he advised Curdy to leave Thailand immediately. Curdy agreed and asked Jimmy to take May to a safe location, promising a substantial sum of money in return. Jimmy accepted the request, believing he would soon be released by the gang. However, unbeknownst to Curdy, Jimmy had been collaborating with Rajadan all along. This revelation came to light in a subsequent scene, where Rajadan met with Jimmy to devise a plan to lure Curdy into a trap. If they succeeded in killing Curdy and presenting his head to Boss Katha, Rajadan's ambition to succeed his father would be realized. Initially, Jimmy refused to comply with Rajadon's plan, as their original intention was only to tarnish Advisor Boone's reputation, not to kill Curdy. But Rajadon persisted, even threatening Jimmy's life if he continued to refuse. Meanwhile, Curdy returned to the Temple Tower to bid farewell to May. He informed her of his plan to return to the United States, assuring her that his friend Jimmy would be arriving soon to protect her. Curdy then left the money for Jimmy with May and went on his way. Later, as Curdy waited at the airport to board a flight out of Thailand, he called Jimmy to inform him of his departure. To his surprise, Jimmy told Curdy that he had gone to the Temple Tower as instructed but only found the money. There was no sign of May or anyone else. Curdy grew suspicious that Jimmy had betrayed him and was working with the gang to lure him into a trap. Shortly after, some gang members arrived at the airport. Curdy stealthily approached their car, knocked out the driver, and stole the vehicle. He raced back to the Temple Tower, but found no trace of May, leading him to believe she had been kidnapped by the gang and taken to their headquarters. Wasting no time, Curdy drove to the gang's base and crashed through the wall into the room where Boss Katha and Advisor Boone were situated. He pointed his gun at Boss Katha demanding the release of the enslaved girls. Unexpectedly, Boss Katha agreed to Curdy's terms, but only if he revealed who had sent him to attack the gang. Curdy decided to disclose Rajadan's identity as his client, as well as his desire for advisor Boone's demise. Incidentally, Rajadan was present in the room and, infuriated by Curdy's disclosure, shot him in retaliation. Fortunately, Jimmy arrived just in time to shoot Rajadan. With Rajadon dead, Boss Katha ordered his men to release the girls, but May was nowhere to be found. Curdy inquired about her whereabouts, but Boss Katha and Advisor Boone claimed they knew nothing of anyone named May. Unconvinced, Curdy noticed a wall displaying pictures of all the girls affiliated with the gang and found an image of May. He confronted Boss Katha, demanding the truth and May's immediate release. Boss Katha remained adamant that the girl in the picture was named May, but she had been brought in 30 years prior and was now deceased. This revelation led Curdy to conclude that the May he had been with recently was her spirit, possibly seeking help to free the girls from their lives of prostitution. Ultimately, her wish was fulfilled. After receiving payment from Curdy, Boss Katha allowed him and Jimmy to take all the girls away. In the final scene, May's spirit appeared once more beaming with happiness as Curdy had succeeded in freeing the girls. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.